You're listening to the Major Pod Network, the only place where your favorite toy store, card shop, arcade, theme park, and arena are all on the same block. Scratch that major itch. This is Tony Chimmel, and I'd like to introduce the hosts of the Game Marks Podcast, George Feast and Johnny Clash. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Marks Podcast, presented by the Major Pod Network. I am Mr. Anything is Feasible, George Feast. And I'm the man they call Johnny Clash, and today we are playing Wrestling Empire, another in the M. Dickey series of wrestling games. How will this game hold up? Will it get a play forever? Woo! Or a future endeavor? Yeah! We also talk about our worst consoles we've ever owned and more. Ooh, baby. And please subscribe and leave a five-star review for this podcast on both Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And follow along on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. And do not forget, you can get early versions of this podcast. And they're ad-free. Over at patreon.com slash game marks pod. Johnny That's Clash. Right. What's up? Last week we played a banger, a doozy, an all time favorite for us. We played Fire Pro Wrestling World. I'm not even going to ask you if you're sticking with your rating because I know that we both are. Uh, but how are you feeling? Did you have you gone back and you played any more of it since last week? I know I did. That game kind of is always in my constant rotation. What about you? Yeah, of course. Always going through it. Always editing something, whether a ring or a wrestler. Uh, we had someone on YouTube ask that if they buy it on their PC now, will they get the full roster? And the answer is no. If you get the five ninety nine one, which I don't think the sale's going to be on much longer. It might be over by the time this comes out. I think it um, is. You don't get the full game. It is always on sale, but there is like a bundle that's also always on sale where you get like all the DLC and the game. And it, I don't think it tops like 20 bucks. So oh, look yeah, out that, for those sales. And there's always yeah. a sale on Steam for that for on PC. There's the Steam summer sale. There's the Christmas sale. They do random developer sale. So just be on the lookout. Add it to your wish list. Turn on notifications for sale items on your wish list. And not a doubt in my mind that you will eventually come across that baby being on sale. And it is well worth the money. That's right. Um, but as we are recording this, WWE 2K23 is only two weeks away for the deluxe edition. At the time that this episode drops, it'll be two weeks away for everybody else for the standard edition. And they're just constantly releasing more screenshots, more, um, what's it called? Uh, I want to say grades. But I can't oh, think of uh, the, 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 the ratings, ratings. The ratings. Uh, yeah, they're grades. Um, but yeah, That's the it. ratings that for more players. Works. Yeah, so I'm getting a little hyped. I'm ready to play. I'm ready to beat up John Cena. I know everybody oh, else yeah. is. So I'm trying to set up like a tournament within the Game Marks community. Okay, I've been talking okay. to some guys on Discord, and I would open it up to a few more if we can get more slots in. But the thing is, last year didn't have crossplay, and I'm, I don't think this year is going to either, judging by that. But there's still time where it might, but it would be cool to set up like a King of the Ring-style tournament. Oh, yeah. You play on your own time, screenshot us, send us the winner or something like that, and we'll give like the main winner a prize or something. I oh, I would love cool. to do something like that. Yeah, so we'll see if that's in the cards because who knows? People might be on Steam, Xbox, PlayStation. We don't know. But worst comes to worst, maybe we, uh, maybe we, we do like a little we e fed it where it's like you, uh, you can give us a loose description on what your person wants to, <laughs> like what you how you want it to play, and we'll we'll do it like that. I don't have the time for that, but if you want to I, do that, the more power I, I to you. I don't think I do either, but it was an idea that I wanted to float out there just in case we're like, yeah, yeah we can no. figure that out. 
Um, another game coming soon that we kind of forgot about and stopped talking about is WrestleQuest, which is going to feature like a whole slew of Macho Man, the Road Warriors, Andre, okay. Jake the Snake. It's an RPG wrestling game, and it's coming. It's coming in May, so it's ready to be released. I'm not sure if that's the full release or if it's going to start out on Steam and then go to consoles later, like most of the other releases we've seen. But from the look of it, from looking at the game and the style and the trailers, it's like one of the most complete games we've seen put out by an indie developer. As and it of looks late. beautiful. Yeah. That and also, today, the day of recording... Ultra Pro Wrestling dropped a trailer and their Kickstarter, and it's a real like homage to No Mercy and those classic AKI games. It looks the- cool. Play style looks cool. I'm very excited to see where this goes. And uh, yeah, who knows that that may be a game that we uh, will be covering sooner rather than later. Yeah, everything from like the movements and the moves are like exactly the same from No Mercy and they took their time. We kind of followed them from the start of development. So that's been cool watching and seeing how it develops. And it's also not final and it's already looking great. So we can't wait for that. And we'll keep you updated on that and every other game that's coming out. WrestleQuest, definitely one I'm going to check out so a little bit of everything it's a good time to be a uh, i feel like i've said this uh every other week for the last couple of weeks now uh it's a good time to be a fan of wrestling and video games there's a lot of uh new exciting things on the horizon a lot of things that could kind of change the landscape of uh of this thing that we love so much and uh yeah very very exciting but listen guys uh we got another contest going on if you head on over to our instagram at Game Marks Pod, find the pin post and tag three friends. You can be entered to win the, if you're watching the video version, the exact figure that Johnny Clash is holding up right now. It is the Corazon de Leon Chris Jericho AEW figure. It is a very, very, very cool looking figure. Super, super detailed. Illuminaries. Love it. And, uh, yeah, how do you, how do you not want to get a free figure? All you got to do, like I said, head on over to Instagram and, uh, check out at game marks pod, find the pin post and tag three friends and you could win this figure. That's right. But with that, John, is it time for us to hop in, get on those nostalgia goggles to the far, far away land of 2021 as we get into this deep dive i i guess i'm as ready as i'll ever be you know what yeah i'm just gonna have to push in dive in after hey george you see this light here that says game over that i point to at the end of every single episode like ronda rousey pointing to that wrestlemania sign i do do you know where I got it? Uh, why don't you tell me? I got it from Zavi. That's us.zavi.com. Z-A-V-V-I. And they literally have everything. I have spent hours on this website looking up Mandalorian, Jurassic Park, Harry Potter, like everything you could imagine. There's Legos, Power Rangers. You could pre-order the new Marvel Legends. It's an insane website that has literally everything pop culture. There's even Batman shoes on here. I mean, I know... For me, uh, a little like adult Zen garden project that I like to do is like the smaller Lego sets. And Zavi has a lot of those Lego sets on there and getting kind of itchy. So if you like all things pop culture, like John said, Disney, Star Wars, Marvel, DC, Harry Potter, Nintendo, they're even getting into the wrestling game now. Oh, yeah. Zavi is the place for you. That's right. Use code GameMarks, simply just game marks at checkout and you can get 10% off i'm gonna redo my wardrobe all right the deep dive sponsored by zavi and we are talking all about wrestle wrestling empire sorry 
Wrestling Empire released January 11th, 2021 for the Switch, January 17th for the iOS, January 30th for the Android, and July 2nd on Steam. Developed and published by M. Dickey. Other games that released in 2021, you've got New Japan, Strong Spirits, WWE Champions, WWE Undefeated, Retromania Wrestling, and Action Arcade Wrestling. So and we've covered what? Let's yeah, see, three, I think like majority of these. Yeah. Four, maybe. <laughs> wow. So it's been a while since we had an M. Dickey game. Yes, and we did reach out to him after we played Wrestling Revolution 3D. And we wanted to see if it was possible to get an interview. But it was right after this game came out. And he was a little burnt out. So he said, hit me up down the line and see where we're at. I know he's retired from wrestling games a few times. And I know it could be taxing. And I know he's constantly updating this game. So maybe we'll get that in the future. But it would be cool to see uh, just what goes into these. So. I don't know. I always kind of put these games with like the five star wrestling and the other rip off. I don't want to say rip off, but they're kind of rip off games. Tribute, but homage, tribute, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, they are a tribute to like the past games, like we said with Ultra Pro Wrestling, and they want them to be like the old N sixty four and like GameCube titles, like the old yeah. school ones. And I think it's there. Is it the main? bread and butter of the games not really but there's like something there i guess but man this is his first game since 2018 wow. so he hit us with wrestling revolution then wrestling revolution 3d but yep. after that he released the u testament the 2d coming mobile game so if you go onto his wikipedia page and look up matt dickey with one n uh, sorry, one T, not one N. <laughs> um, there's no N. Um, you, his list of games, especially mobile games, is massive. Oh, and yeah. And then there's like a Hardy Boys game. There's CM Punk like promo simulator or something like that, which is crazy. And I remember seeing all these because years ago, you didn't get many wrestling games. So if you did get one, if you're in like the Android store, the iOS store, all of these popped up as like the related games and you'd be like, what is wrestling revolution? What the hell are these graphics? And maybe if you weren't in that like cult, like we spoke of last week with like fire pro, you have no idea what we're talking about and you don't want these games. Well, so this is the thing. If you just Google M Dickey, it takes you. The first thing that comes up is, is the website and it says celebrating three decades of solo game development. The catalog Crazy. of games that this man has put out, whether you love them or you hate them, some people love them, some people hate them. But at the end of the day, you have to appreciate the man's dedication to game development. He's been doing it for 30, 30 years alone, solo development. Nuts. I mean, it's it's very impressive. It's for the Switch, for iOS, for Android, for Steam. Uh, there's there are older games that are just on uh, Windows from an EXE file. Like he's done it all. So I'm actually looking back, and for both Wrestling Revolution and Wrestling Revolution 3D, I future endeavored, and you played them forever. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's where we're at going into this episode. So it looks like, judging from his website, the first game that he made was in 2002, and it was called Sure Shot. Then right. that was followed up with Sure Shot Star Wars Edition, also in 2002. And then you get the first wrestling game, which is Federation Wrestling. Now, I don't know where this fits or if this was ever published, but apparently Wrestling Empire is based on wrestling empire spelled M pyre, like not E empire. So that was a game, I guess from his past. And this yep. is kind of an homage to that saying, maybe this is his last game, but it's that certainly is, his more drawn out game he's ever had. So that is on his website, wrestling M pyre in 2008. Wow. That's pretty cool. So as you build these, the wrestling revolution 2d and 3d, 
you're getting Wrestling Empire. It's the same characters. It's the same play style. Everything kind of carries over, but it gets more developed, more drawn out. And it's, yeah, it's updated. It's cool. The customizations within this game are insane. And then they added stuff like you could have two titles at once per wrestler. You can uh, just more in the edit mode, more with the rings. Like you can now do, uh, what's it called? The virtual crowd like they had during the pandemic. Oh, yeah, yeah. You could do the, uh, oh, my God. What was the that Thunderdome. Called? Thunderdome. I was ahead of both of us forget that. It's, it's, it's featured in our favorite video game of all time. That's right. And it's also constantly updated. Like he's on version 1.55, I believe, of Wrestling Empire. And that was the big thing. Like Wrestling Revolution, Revolution 3D were behind paywalls. There were season passes and whatnot. This, once you pay, you get everything right away. It's all there. Of course, it's going to be a little more expensive. It's going to be a full 20 bucks, but, but it's worth it because you get it all and it constantly updates. And this, I mean, judging, we're going to get into our feelings a little bit later, but Aww, are we <laughs> from from the reviews, the response from people that we both know that have played this game for a long time? This was touted as the most polished version of any m dicky game you can tell that if this was going to be the one that he stopped making wrestling video games on uh this was going to be the one that had a little bit of everything and it was going to be literally everything and the kitchen sink for this game well that's the thing even if he does want to stop developing games the fact that he could just go in and keep making updates to this one kind of keeps him going so if he does get that itch again he could put in um, a literal kitchen sink if he wanted to it's probably there yeah, the weapons true. are endless. It's anything from like a wheelchair to a gun. Okay. So we'll cover those in a little bit. But <laughs> let's talk about the gameplay. It's pretty unique because the Very. animations allow transitions from anything. You could reverse a reversal into another reversal and just keep it going. The it's thing nuts. for me that really stood out about the the transitions and and the reversals is that you could go from both people being on the floor to then just you know doing like like (laughs) on all fours punching each other back and forth to then someone's on the floor you go in for a grapple then all of a sudden you're transitioning it's like a rear naked choke then you're popping them up by the shoulders then the other person reverses it hits you with the german suplex but then they reverse the german suplex like it it's like watching a like a like a old school pwg match like it's it's like that level of transition yes it's like watching ricochet versus will osprey over and over again but they're all uh their faces are looking a little funky (laughs) um not you know what not even this game like i think 3d and the previous game there was like uh what the hell am i looking at but Everything here has been updated. Like the face scans. The textures scans, are a little but, bit cleaner here yeah, than they like, have been in the past. They actually look like humans and it's pretty cool. Yeah, but still maintaining that same body form and uh, physics based um, response that you're, if you're familiar with the M. Dickey uh, line of games, like it's still definitely within that universe. Oh, for sure. And of course, you could play up to four players locally. I don't think there's online play unless. No, you're doing there's it no through, online play. Yeah, unless you're using like Parsec <laughs> or maybe maybe this game is uh, the Steam remote play compatible. We didn't check that, but. No, nothing be. came up when we loaded it. So I don't think it is, okay. but it would be cool to see, especially since this is on consoles. It would be cool to be a multiplayer yeah. game. I get it. There's a whole nother level of support for that, though. So I understand why it wouldn't be there. Yeah. But also during the game, something. <laughs> hopefully you could turn it off we didn't turn it off because it was too much fun but during the game you could actually switch to the other players in the game you could switch to the ref you could switch to the other player if they switch to the ref you could switch to the manager you could just constantly go in and out you could be your tag partner you could be your tag partner's tag partner you could be your opponent's tag partner <laughs> it just never ends it's it's yeah it's non-stop it never ends and um it's total you- non-stop action I was going to say it creates a lot of chaos, but yeah, we'll go with the TNA reference because it's Johnny Clash. (laughs) Total chaos does not even begin to cut it. Everything from when you start the match, it's bell, not even bell to bell. It is 
a fully immersive experience. Yeah. You walk yourself to the ring. You get in the ring. You start the match. You do what you want. And that's it. Yeah. You could customize the matches any way possible. Not even the matches. You could I was just going to say, it's not even match. the matches. <laughs> you could do a promo before the match and kind of set up what the match is. You can set interference after the match. You can do it. The arenas are another story. And then airport, you could do it in a plane. You could do it in a and hotel you, room. The, you can get so granular with the specifics of how you want the match to be. You can change the fog levels on an outside venue, something that I thought was really cool. Might be a I'm lot of pyro. I'm surprised that other games don't do this. You can outright move, remove the ring completely. Yeah. Just want to fight in a, in a hangar with an airplane in the background with heavy fog, weapons all around, and no ring? M. Dickey is the game. The Wrestling Empire is the game for you. M. Dickey has got you taken care of. Right, but let's talk about these matches here because there are so many, and I can't list them all. There's so many, but you have single, hardcore, a confrontation, which is just kind of like a backstage little, but yep. well, not even backstage. It could be anywhere you make it. A furniture smash, which you have to just smash the furniture. We did the that ring. in uh, Wrestling Revolution. We 3D. did. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> There's a best of three in Iron Man submission, last man standing, a last laugh, which is kind of like a beat the clock, a sumo match, first blood, street fight, tag team. War, Battle Royale, and Escape to Victory. Now, now, in addition to that, you can also change even more about the, the matches when you go in and you customize the ring shape or the ring ropes or you're going to add a cage ring. or the style of cage. When I say that you can change the ring, I don't mean that you can make it non-existent or six-sided or just like a standard ring. You can change the size of the ring. You can have it be like, a 40 by 40 the st- <laughs> <laughs> or or you can have it be where it's like half of a i don't know john are indies known for having small wrestling rings indies that- are usually 16 okay so you can make one that's that in game looks like it's 14 by 14 yeah, i've been in those <laughs> not fun shout out to all the shindies i used to work oh but- you could add a cage as well when you have the typical types of cages you could think of, like the black, the blue, the the wire cage and all that. It's a lot of fun. It's a, I think that's most of the fun of this game, and it's the customizations. And I was kind of looking like, how do I make a wrestler? I'm really not sure how, because there's nothing that just says create a wrestler. It's all edit mode. So you could either go in and edit the wrestlers that are there. But what I did was I cloned one of them into a new slot. And from there, I was able to go in and completely customize my wrestler. And it's a little confusing. I think this is one instance where, like when we were setting up the match, it was easier for me to do on mouse than to do on controller because you could just click things. Yeah. But the edit mode was getting a little confusing with clicking stuff because if you click certain spots of the little bar that say like the hairstyle, it would go either forward or backwards. And I didn't realize that for a while. Got it, got it. So I'm clicking like backwards, like, wait, why am I seeing the same stuff? Not realizing I have to click the forward part of it. There's no like yeah. arrow. So I would think that's a little easier on controller to do, but it was a lot of fun still. There's um, a lot of options. I think that's – so I said it before. I'm going to say it again. I feel like the name of the game for Wrestling Empire is – Wrestling Empire, yeah. Well, yes, but also that like granular – intricate customization you can go in and you can make the matches the arena your wrestler uh any aspect of this game exactly what you wanted it's 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 like a a step above fire pro in that sense yeah a huge 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 step but it's it's like um it's almost like he went i'm gonna build a create like the entire create a suite first and then We'll build the wrestling game around it. But, like, I want to be able to have all these customizations. And then then we'll put in, like, the arenas. And, or, like, then we'll put in the crowds and, like, the moves and stuff like that. But first, I want to make sure that you can go in there and <laughs> and really just make your wrestlers and the kind of matches whatever you want them to be. Yeah. It's like he uh, made the edit mode and then just based the rest of the game using the edit mode himself yeah, to like, make oh, the wrestlers. Yeah. It's a wrestling game, I guess, so... <laughs> God, you probably should get to the wrestling part, but but the bread and butter here is to do the career modes or the booking career. So the career yeah. mode, you start with 
you have a few different brands and you go based on popularity. You have the All American Wrestling, Federation Online, Weekend Warriors, which is a new brand this year, Maple Leaf Grappling, Super Lucha Libre, which is uh, Sting's Federation. I'm sorry, Venom, Strong Style Wrestling. Wrestling Revolution, which is also a new brand, and the Wrestling School, which is like your jobbers and your made-up guys. And of course, everyone is still based upon actual wrestlers. And you now feature some fake uh, little AEW wrestlers as well. So (laughs) you get that this year. And you can still edit within the career mode the wrestlers and their moves and all that. But there's also like different parodies in here. Like you get a fake like Joe Rogan type show that you can go on, <laughs> but the cutscenes are ridiculous. Um, I mean, that's something that's posted about in our discord constantly, constantly. It's, uh, it's what made me it. buy this game. Yeah. So you could like have such a long career, but all of a sudden someone will like die because of a ridiculous reason from like final destination. And then at <laughs> the a funeral, good, that's a very good <laughs> So like at the funeral, another fight will break out. Someone else will die because of something else. And it's just a whole thing of ridiculousness. It's not your typical wrestling career mode. And it's something no. worth looking into. But then the booking career is somewhat like a GM mode. I tried it. And for someone who doesn't really like the GM modes, it was not for me because it's just a lot to put into it. And I uh, don't have the time or energy to just sit there and make matches i could i actually perfect example talking to our buddy dylan postel i don't know if you ever heard of him today no and he said what are you playing tonight he likes asking that so i said wrestling empire he said i never heard of it (laughs) and what did i respond i gotta see what i responded oh i said it's a mobile game turned to console and he wrote nope i'm out i sent him the graphics and he wrote people paid for that and i'm like well it has a long gm mode and stuff and he goes this is I feel him on this. Paper and pencil works fine for fake booking. I'm like, well, when you put it that way, who needs this? Yeah, but, but you could say that about every GM mode in every game. And I will, because I'm not a GM guy. I know, but it's got its place. But uh, nothing really changed here from the previous booking modes. The career mode is the one that changed the most. But these kind of stayed the same from the Wrestling Revolutions games. And now... Pretty much, you just talk to the promoter every once in a while. You make the matches. You try to build your popularity amongst your brand and make sure that they're still the top brand. You set your champions in the matches, and that's that's really it. The Game Marks Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming, providing precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. The Performance Package 4.0 has arrived, and oh, man. Is it a game changer? It's the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. The Performance Package 4.0 comes with the Lawnmower 4.0, body hair trimmer, the Weed Whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, below the belt toner and deodorant, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. It's definitely holding all my goodies, if you know what I mean. Over 7 million men worldwide trust Manscaped with their grooming needs, and we've got an exclusive offer for all of the game marks out there. You can get 20% off your order and free worldwide shipping just by using the code GAMEMARKS at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tool for the job with Manscaped. Manscaped Manscaped.com and use code GAMEMARKS. Well, normally, John, um, this is the part where I would say, would you like to go and read through this roster and we can split it up? <laughs> but you um, there's a you heard John list off the brands before. There's a lot of brands. And in total, there are 350 different wrestlers in this game. And, and there's still some being added. And I don't know if you guys want us to to read 350 names but um there's there's some tributes parodies whatever you want to call them homage whatever you want to call to like big names big names that you would expect there's they look good oh yeah there's a big boss man there's a sid vicious there's a savage there's uh 
there's Hogan, there's Triple H, there's CM Punk. Uh, <laughs> Test Tath- everyone. No, I'm just going through like the big <laughs> thing. But then you also got like the fun ones. Like there's a Nacho Libre in there. There's just kind of Andy. There's an Andy Kaufman lookalike in there. And some of the names very on the nose. Some of the names maybe not so much. But you're like we said, you're getting more than uh, wrestlers. You're getting people like Bruce Lee, like Mike Tyson, like Mickey Rourke. Uh, there's, there's that. Yeah. Like why has Mickey Rourke never been in a game or an action figure or anything? That's, Give us Randy the Ram. There we go. John's, John's official request. Uh, I'm going to look up something real quick while I'm on this. Okay. There, okay. So there is, uh, a unlockable character and, uh, we could have done, we could have done the Saturn Canyon match. Oh, you did find Canyon. Yeah, so there's Crucial Kennedy, who is uh, Chris, Chris Canyon, and then Saturn, I think, is called Neptune? No, Uranus. Uranus, that's what it is. How could you forget that one? As. You just didn't want to be the one to say it. Now, in this game, it's different from the previous games. Uranus, because- John. It's Uranus. They changed it because PC. Yeah, sure. They changed um, it because of the performance center. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, the roster here for the older wrestlers is more 80s and 2000s rather than more updated, like Sting is Surfer Sting. Yeah. But you could always edit that and change that. Yeah. If you want the full roster, go to mdickey.fandom.com and look for Wrestling Empire, and they're all listed there. Now the artwork and the art style. Wrestling you. Empire went a little different this time. Wrestling Revolution 3D, the logo, left a little to be desired. I think Wrestling it's... Empire kind of picked it up a little bit. Uh, while, while going back to the Empire game from 2008, look and feel a little bit. I will say this: um, it took me, and I'm 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 blaming my I'm blaming myself, and I don't even know why I'm saying this on the <laughs> podcast. But the the E is supposed to be ring ropes, correct? Correct. For the longest time, because of the coloring, I go, oh, I guess rebar is a big part of the game. I guess you can, like, hit someone with a piece of rebar. Come on. <laughs> I thought it was a weapon because that was a big part. Come but, on. Uh, it's literally the WWF literally, colors. and Yeah, I know. Red ropes. It In a, in a quick thought, when I first saw it, I went, oh, rebar. Cool. <sighs> it's just two rods sticking out of the E. Hey, you ever know, man? Could be, maybe it's. <laughs> well, it's a big upgrade from Wrestling Revolution. I like it a lot. Um, it's a great logo. We kind of touched on the art style and the faces and all that, the body types. Everyone does look a little action figurey here, I think. Like a little. Uh... <laughs> I was going to take a shot at something, but I'm not going to do it. Um, Coming 2074. No, 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 no. I was going to say they look like a certain toy brand made them, but I'm not going to do that. Ah. Um, I don't know. And he really updated them this year. The crowd. Let's talk about the crowd. They look good from a front perspective. Yes. But as you would expect, they are made of cardboard. So when you're looking at them from the side, they are just flat, which is fine. It's what you get. It's what you expect with this game. And they actually disappear because you could like remove rows of chairs from yeah. the crowd and fight in an empty arena. So you could, pick the percentage of crowd you want which is pretty cool which is you, something that the you don't want half time games heat. also started to do but i feel like they did it on the pc side more so from a let's try to uh have less strain on hardware so you can like turn down the crowd and stuff yeah i think we've done it um yeah, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, because everyone, everyone wants to do, like, halftime heat and all that, right? So you can get that uh, empty arena match. So let's keep going here because I like the backstage areas and the backstage arenas. I think they look super cool with, like, the press conferences and stuff. But you also get that old school, like, GM's office that you would get in the video. Like, specifically, I remember it in the Day of Reckoning games and, like, WrestleMania 19 when you're talking to Stephanie and all that. And it's here. It's back. I got to tell you. George is looking at his phone and has no idea what I just said. 
No, I heard everything that you said. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, but the the backstage, the customization that you can get, and then the I struggled with this last time. They're not. It's not McMahon. It's Mc McMahon. McMahon. No, it's a uh, McMahon. Monaco. Oh, that's what it is. I was like, it's not. It's not McMahon. It's something like it. But yeah. the the backstage segment where you're like, there's like the uh, the big conference room, and you see the city, like New York City or the fake New York City in the background, like the. <laughs> it's like those little jabs that are always fun, and the um, I'm trying to remember is is their press conference in Revolution? I think to, there is to the extent that it is now. I'm sure there has been stuff added, but I'm looking now at this screenshot we have, which is from I think the Nintendo Switch store, and you could do like full on UFC press conferences now, and that's who the McMahon is in this game. Greg McMahon is Conor McGregor. Got it, got it. Yeah, so you could do those. The belts in this game are pretty nice because Beautiful. they're like direct <laughs> PNGs of the actual belts. <laughs> they look great. I don't know how he got away with that. I, he removed the logos. I don't I don't know, but they look pretty good and they make a nice like jewelry clinking noise when you hit someone with them. <laughs> All Weird. the sound effects in this game are um there's a gun. But <sighs> okay, we talk about the gun. We got to talk about the other thing. There's a the wheelchair? St- there's sticks of dynamite. Sticks of dynamite. <laughs> Full maybe, on sticks of dynamite. Maybe that, that's his homage to AEW putting them in the game. Let's put if, the dynamite. If you can, uh, if you hit someone with it, uh, it explodes. But also while you're holding it, someone can kick it and it explodes then and the damage is done to you. Uh, but it doesn't look that way. It just looks like both people get the, the the worst of it and uh it's it's very interesting to have a, a game where suddenly there's just you're walking around and you're like oh there's a gun oh there's a little present there's a wheelchair and a stick of dynamite <laughs> and if you move towards the wheelchair you just sit in it and then you, you can run sit. people over you can also get knocked into it which is and then. run people over <laughs> yes <laughs> oh this game is just ridiculous but but not, there's also the tag right. team moves yeah, or, you did those. I wasn't able to do those because my tag team partner was eliminated almost immediately. That is true. But you can do uh, the GMP64 staple of the podcast device that's in there. You uh, can. But you could do it with anything off the top rope. A little doomsday device off the top rope. But you could do it with a drop kick. You could do it with a uh, flying knee, spinning wheel kick, whatever you want to do. And it all, it all hits. It all connects. All connects. And if it connects, it might reverse into 17 more things from that. So That is very, very true. But before we get into the next section, there is... Did you know? Son of a bitch. Did you know M. Dickey originally wanted to release this to coincide with the 20th anniversary of the release of WWF No Mercy in 2020, which also marked the 20th year as a game developer? Damn. Did you know M. Dickey described himself as being single-handedly responsible for the worst games to ever be enjoyed by millions of people? (laughs) Did you know you can get Wrestling Empire for $19.99 or choose the light demo version on iOS or Android? Hell yes. But with that, John... You're never going to get me on the did you know. That's my thing. I... Yeah... I knew where you were going. It's my new shtick. I just want to try to get it in there and see if I can catch okay. up. Okay. Nobody wants to know about your Thursday nights. But let's relax. Let's do some R&R. Take it easy with some ratings and reviews. It's so inappropriate. Because on Steam, this one is overwhelmingly positive. Over 1,200 overwhelmingly positive reviews that is as i think high as you can get on steam if not right up there yeah i think that's the highest google play a 4.4 stars that's fifty-three thousand reviews over 1 million downloads that's absurd apples you get a 4.2 out of 5 out of 3,000 ratings metacritic okay so this is the one i wanted to talk about Metacritic, the critics, give this a 57. 
which is what you would expect because they're going into the fine details. They're doing kind of what we did when we first started looking at these games three yeah. years ago. But now, the user score on Metacritic is an 8.3. So that's where you kind of have to judge this, by what people think, not by what the critics say, because they're going off technicalities. They're not going off of... They're wrestling fans, and they want to play these games, and they followed him, Dickie's career, and they like his style, and blah, 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 blah. And we've said this, I don't know how many times on the podcast, but if you're listening to this podcast, and whether you're... Someone who's listened to this podcast since the first episode or you're a, 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 someone who just listens to games that they know or this is the first time you're listening, uh, we encourage you to go out and play the games if you have the ability to to do so. Like, yes, we read ratings and reviews from other people. We give our opinions on the game, but go and play them for yourself. 99% of the experience uh, is – playing it like yes there's a small part of it that's like oh you want to hear what other people say or other people think form opinions based off that but you're not going to know if you like the game until you get the controller in your hands yourself and play it highly encourage everyone to do that because who knows i i'm willing to bet that if swaggle played this game he would love it it's you know what i'll get to that when we rate the game but the final Rating here is game FAQ user rating, and it gets a 4 out of 5, which is considered great. Difficulty is a 3 out of 5, and the hours played are 80 hours average, which is crazy. Hell yes. But with that, John, do you happen to know what time it is? It is a half past time to rate the game. The game! All right, Johnny Clash, Wrestling Empire. Will you play it forever Woo! for future endeavor? You're fire! So since I own it, and since I would like to get those ridiculous stories going in the career mode, I'm going to have to say play it forever. Woo! Yes. But here's the but. It's always it's a but. A, it's a play of forever, but playing it is frustrating as all hell. Like the actual gameplay is frustrating because you're constantly trying to kick and punch and do a grapple and it's reversed and it's like a struggle to actually get it done. So for that, I don't know. Okay. But it's still a play of forever because I own it. And it, by technicality, it's a play of forever. But it's it's tough to like keep going. Let me uh, let me offer an argument to that. All right, Point George, will you play it forever or future endeavor? So I'm going to play it forever. Woo! I think you are, uh, how I like to say sometimes, you're a player forever, but you're on the line of whether or not you would, you would, you would go back to it. For me, what I think is that this is akin to your experience with Fire Pro Wrestling. It's a game that you have not had the opportunity to put in a great amount of time into but i feel like this is now the second or third m dicky game that we've played third. and i feel like you've gradually gotten a little bit more into it and understood it a little bit more so i think you know a couple months from now you've you've got a couple more hours in the game under your belt maybe you'll maybe be like all right i fully understand all the game now i i, I love every part of it it may be my new Fire Pro, and who knows? Maybe this time next year you will be uh, the Johnny Wrestling Empire. It doesn't doesn't quite roll off the tongue as nice as Johnny Fire Pro, but who knows? None of that's going to happen. But it's still played forever by technicality. So, <laughs> so, so what's your reason? Uh, it 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 builds upon the the format of a game that was already super successful in my eyes. I think it has uh, a huge creative suite that literally has a game style, a match style for everyone. And I think that these kinds of games are fun and few and far between. And yeah, I, I for the same reason that you said before about uh, wanting to see all the crazy storylines that happen, I think that it's a it's an awesome little feature. It's something that has been 
a big staple in our our uh, podcast Discord since the game released, and now we now we can keep it going. That's it. But all right, let us know what you think of these games as well. George, is it time to enter the soft lock? It is time. All right, so the soft lock is a weekly segment where a mega mega mark where a mega mark from our Patreon gives us a topic to discuss, debate. It's a question of the week, and this week the question is: Who's it from? Justin Summers. Ah, the question is from Justin Summers. And Justin would like to know what is the worst video game console that you have ever owned, and I have an answer. Almost immediately for one reason. Let's hear it. It is the Virtual Boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it is only for the fact that it gave you the... It was the coolest console at the time, but it gave you the worst headache. Why like is you, everything red? You could not play that console for long periods of time, but it was so cool. <laughs> I have never, like, I remember this, but I have never played it. I'm looking at it now. The oh. red screen would just yeah. murder you. I think, I think we had, so this is, this was a funny, uh, a funny console. So it was like the family's console. And by the family's console, I mean, like, like me and several of my cousins all shared this one console and it was like a joint gift one year. <laughs> what? Uh, because it was, uh, from if memory serves, it was ex- very expensive when it came out. Um, but so there was this like how Wario- did you determine who got it? We just we were. I think it was just like some people had it sometime, like certain period of time. I don't know. I was a kid. I didn't think about the. You got to find out who has it. Yeah, I, I do have to find out who has it because I guarantee you it's probably in a in a bin in someone's attic. Yeah. But uh, it was. I think it was like a couple hundred bucks when it came out, but we had this Wario tennis game. I think that's what it was. Let me let me do a quick Google. Wario. Da-da-da-da. Was it Wario tennis? Uh, Mar- yeah, it was just Ma- uh, Mario tennis, not Wario. And it was it was a lot of fun, but like I said, it's just you got a headache real quick. Yeah, I believe it. What about you? Worst console you've ever owned? So I've never hated a console that I had. But I'm going to say that... Well, no. The Nintendo Cybico? Did you have the Cybico? I love the Cybico. That was... (laughs) We talked about that before, right? it had Doom on it. It was great. I remember, like, writing a ghost story on it because it had a keyboard. And it was was (laughs) awesome. It's a smartphone for a smartphone. It was a kid's Palm Pilot. So I was going to say the Xbox 360, even though I loved it because of the fact that the red ring was so easy to get. And then you'd be like two months without the console once you had to send it back. That's true. That is or the true. original Xbox that like set houses on fire, even though I love that as well. But if I never owned the Nintendo Wii, I would be perfectly happy in my life. You you did not have a good Wii experience. And I, I feel loved like... loved Wii Sports. I would say, I feel like Star Wars, The Force Unleashed, really ruined your... (laughs) Uh, It was like a bunch of games. I don't know. I feel like I had many games for it. I just didn't enjoy them. Like, you think, like, using a joystick and, like, movement would be fun, but it's just not. (laughs) Well, they have Nintendo Switch Sports now, John. You can can get it, and there's online play. Yeah, I'm still not going to ever do that, so... (sighs) I am missing out on zero. You're missing out on... That's fine. A lot. The other... No, I got everything I need. The Were other, you a Game Gear guy? Nope. My cousin was. He was way older. I was still playing the Game Boy at that point. Mm. But the other thing that was pretty bad was when I got one of my Galaxy phones years ago. It came with like the VR headset, but it only worked with like oh, yeah. their own store. And all you yeah, could do yeah, is yeah. like pick up objects and put them down. I do remember that. It was just Samsung VR, right? Yeah, you couldn't get any of the cool games. Yeah. There was like, it, you could like sit in the roller coaster simulator and like even. just like watch the video play. I'm like, oh, all right, this is 
Oh my god! One of my friends had it. And he was like, "Try this out. It's the future." I'm like, "All right, just go on a roller coaster." <laughs> there was one game where you could like go through different rooms in like an office and like move stuff, and you had to figure out mysteries. And I played it for like three hours straight and accomplished nothing. And I was like, "I am never <laughs> turning this on again." And then you know what the worst part is? Once you're done with that phone, that's it. Yeah, that's it. You uh, you can't really go back to it. And uh, it wasn't even Type C. It was like the old USB, so yeah, you're kind of just done. So yeah. that was really stupid. But hey, it came with the phone, so who cares? Yeah, I just via. I was actually talking to uh, to Knick about this. That in a couple of years, the VR, like how we know it now, with like Oculus and um, the Hive or vive htc is the high vive oh, there's vive, meta whatever. quest and all those yeah there's there's a, there's a couple of uh of headsets out there but um like i don't know five eight years i think vr is going to be way more accessible and then uh that this is actually what connects in like five or ten years he thinks vr is going to be way more accessible and that um pretty much every console is going to be like that's going to be like the main thing, like all of like the Call of Duties and the battlefronts and the battlefields are all going to be in VR. And it's going to be like, um, what's that movie? Ready Player One? Yeah, it's going to be like that. Yeah, I feel like there's still got to be like not that though for the people like me who hate the Wii. <laughs> yeah, there's 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 got to be a balance. Yeah. All right, good question. Let us know what your worst console was, George. What are we playing next week? Well, here's the thing, John. We've done a lot of wrestling games, but I think we need to take All right, Madden 98. Not a break, but play a different kind of wrestling game. Have you ever heard of a game called Guacamelee? <laughs> no. I would like you to go to the Google machine. <laughs> no. Guacamelee. What? It's what is this? It's a platformer like a Metroidvania game, but it's based in like the wrestling luchador world. You take control of the main character named Hmm. Juan and you play through this game. That's me. Yes. So I think that this could be. Uh, a cool game. It's been out. Uh, there's actually even a sequel that came out um, uh, a couple of years after its initial release. I want to say that this game came out in like early. Let's see. Pull it up right now. So it was released in 2013, and there was a sequel that was released in 2018. Interesting. So, yeah, it'll be a little bit a wrestling adjacent game, but I I think that we've discussed. It. Uh, behind the scenes of if this counts and we both were just like yeah it kind of counts so that's what we're going to be playing next week guacamelee okay sure let's do it youtube.com slash game marks podcast for our weekly playthrough videos exclusive content and a whole lot more game marks pod.com slash shop for all of our exclusive merch designs I know that I have said that I'm going to put up the new shirt designs and I will uh, I'm just waiting. Uh, I have to send one to John so he can give me the the old thumbs up or whether or not we're going to put it live. It's uh, be a little Easter egg for all you uh, eagle-eyed listeners of how we end almost every podcast nowadays. Patreon.com slash GameMarksPod for this show early and ad-free at GameMarksPod on all forms of social media. And make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. It's in, it's not working. I got it needs it needs oh, a platform you, under it. See, there we go. Oh, I was gonna say, did you break the bell already? God, can't have air under it. Ah, and make sure to leave us a five star rating and review on both Apple Podcast and Spotify. And if you have a product or a service that you would like to advertise on this podcast, please reach out to us at gamemarkspod at gmail dot com. That's it. Another game, another week. Thank you for listening, Johnny Clash do that thing bye bye bitch (laughs) 
game marks podcast put them on the radar play a rare game second saturn no game shard johnny and george work hard and they play hard future endeavor games and put them in the graveyard from the deep dive to the clash at the feast how can i get more that's question of the week follow on twitch there's nothing that they won't play game marks podcast every single monday